G'day guys, how are you? And welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can create your very own SQLite database within Visual Studio using VB.net. So let's begin. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to Tools, we're going to go to the NuGet Package Manager, and we're going to go to Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. Once that pops up, we're going to go to Browse, and we're going to search for SQLite. Once you get the result back, so you'll see the first one, system.data.sqlite. Click on that one, go over to the right here underneath versions, click on project, that way the console app 12 or whatever your program is selected as well, and click on install. Once this window here pops up, just press OK. It's just letting you know that it's going to install these particular dependencies, and yeah, we'll be good to go. So once it's finished, just close out of the NuGet solution, and now we're good to go. So usually what I like to do when I'm creating an SQLite database, or even just a standard MS SQL database, I usually like to create a class, that way, you know, everything's not sort of bunched up on the one form. So what I'm going to do in this particular case, I'm just going to go to the project, I'm going to go to add class, I'm going to select class, and I'm going to name it server. Add that one and it should add it to your um, solution. Beautiful. So now we've got that done, we're going to import the SQLite dependencies, which is just system data SQLite, and now we're good to begin. So with SQLite, we need to create it. We're going to create the database, but first we need to obviously where we're going to store that database. For this video, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. So it's going to be in location as string equals environments. Dot get for path and we'll just put it on the desktop. Beautiful. Now I need to name my database. So once again, it's going to go dim uh, file name as string equals and I'll just call it my my data base dot d db. That's the database file. Now I need to combine these files together, so I'm just going to write dim full path a string equals system io path dot combined, and I will combine the location with the file name. Now you're probably wondering why am I doing that? Why wouldn't I just make it on the same string? The reason that is is because now when I create my public connection string, and I'm going to make it public because I may want to use the same connection string to you know do multiple queries and that way I don't have to write it out every single time. So it's going to equal a string and we're going to format that string. So string.format well then let's do that. And now when we're creating a connection string for SQLite, it's really really easy. What we pretty much do is we just write in here data source equals then we'll do the curly braces and put a zero there. And now it's put in the full path. So the connection string basically is the full path to the SQLite database file. So using SQLite is like really, really cool because, for example, if you just wanted to have like just a, a database that was just simply storing names and numbers or whatnot, but you also wanted to share the program with your friends, but they might not necessarily have the required, you know, installation files for an SQL database. So by using SQLite, you actually don't have to really worry about that because, yeah, it's just, that's what the whole idea of SQLite is. Beautiful. So now that we've got those created, what we want to actually do before we even you know, go one step further from there is we need to make sure that we're not actually going to overwrite any duplicate databases because when we go into create a database, if that database already exists, we don't really want to overwrite it um, and we don't really want to have it deleted either. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a private function and I'll just write duplicate, duplicate database. So this is going to search for make sure there's no duplicate databases. It's going to be the full path, that's going to be a string, and now we're just going to simply return a boolean to say, you know, yay or nay, if it is or isn't. So we'll go to return system exists, and now we'll put in here the full path. So if the file does exist, then it's going to return true. And if it doesn't exist, then it's going to return false. Awesome. So now that we've got that done, we're going to now create the database itself. So I'm going to create another public sub, and I'll just call it create a database. Cool. So now we've got that because I've already got my file name in there. If you did want to sort of make it so you can create your own file names, you could just simply use parameters very similar to what I've done in here with full path as string. So now what I need to do is I need to check the C and make sure that the database does not already exist. So I can write here if not duplicate database, and I was putting here full path because I've already declared it above now public area, public class area. So if not duplicate database, then dim create 
create table as string equals, and this is our query. So what I'm going to do before I go one step further is I'm going to show you a really cool program which I use you know, near and all the time when using SQLite. And what it's called is it's called DB Browser for SQLite. And what this does is, yeah, it allows you to create databases, modify the data within that database, delete it, and so on and so on and so on. So what I usually like to do is I go to a new database. I'll just go to the desktop and just call it G. I'll go save. And what happens is it automatically comes up and says, well, hey, let's add a table. What, what do you want to call it? So for my program, I'm just going to call it user login, user login table. And now I can add the field. So I'm just going to put the ID field, which will be our um, primary key. It's going to be an integer. I'm going to tell it that it's PK, which is primary key. It's going to auto increment. And yeah, as you can see down here, it's slowly adding that query code that I need down here. So what I can do now is I can go add another field. I'll call it username. The type I want to do is actually text. I'm not going to worry about these at this current stage because yeah, I don't really have to. But yeah, you get the drift of what this is doing. So now what I can do is I can actually copy this query down here, and now I can just cancel out of all of that. There's no need for any of that. And now I can now just simply copy that text. And this is a query that I need to create my table. So I'll just quickly make this a bit cleaner. And there's a create table query there. So now that I've got my create table query, what I need to now do is I need to now open up my connection for my SQL database. So I can now type in using SQL con as new SQL white connection. And I can now put in my connection string, which is declared above. And beautiful. So there it is there. So now what I can do is I can just type in dim cmd as new. SQL write command, do my brackets, and now I can type in my create table, create table query, and my SQL connection. Awesome. And now I can pretty much just go cmd.execute that query, and that will create that table, and fingers crossed, it puts it onto my desktop. So now what I can do is I can go back over to module one. I can declare the server dim server as new server and now I can say server dot create database console dot read key and let's execute the program and see what happens okay and straight away we can see we've got an error we didn't actually open the connection so let's quickly do that so let's get SQL Go SQL con dot open. It should automatically close anyways once we get out of the using. So as you can see, the program has not crashed yet. So now if I go to my desktop, you can actually see there's my database right there. Beautiful. So now if I was to close out the program, minimize that, go back to that awesome browser that I was telling you guys about and showing you. If I'm just now to drag this file here into there, you can now see that I've got my user login table. It's right there. So if I'm to browse the data, I haven't got anything in there, but you can see we've got username. So there it is there. So if I was to indeed add some now some data to that database, so now what I can do if I want to insert some data into my database is pretty much the same like you do with an MS SQL database. I'll just create a public sub, I'll just call it insert insert user name, I'll um, just put here user name, a string, and then I'll just once again go using uh, SQL con as new SQL connection, SQL white connection, sorry, put in my connection string, write my query, so in this case I'll just go dim insert user Query a string equals insert into a user login table username and the values will be my parameter which will just be at user. Awesome. I can so now I can create the command itself, dim cmd as new SQL write command put in my query, 
put in the connection of where it's going to. Now I can type in cmd dot parameters dot add with value. This will hopefully stop SQL injection. Not that you probably need to worry about it too much, considering this is just going to be a local database only. Put in the value that I want that to be. So put username, and then I'll just write cmd execute the query. But before I do that, I need to remember to open up the connection. So SQL com dot open. Awesome. So now what I can do is I can go to my module one. We can create the database, and then I can just go server dot insert username, and I'm just going to put Andrew Eberly. Beautiful. So let's start the program. I'll just close out the database viewer just in case it says I can't do it because the file is in use. So I'm going to click on start, and we can only assume that the program has completed doing what it's doing. I didn't actually write anything to no notify us of if it's complete or not. I probably should have done that, but just for the sake of the video, I believe you guys will be able to understand it. So now what I can do is I can go back to the database viewer, drag in our database, go to browse data, go to the table I want, which is just user login table, and there you go. You can actually see there's my name right there. So it has indeed inserted it correctly. So there you go, guys. There's a quick video on how you can use SQLite database and how you can also, I guess, insert a value. Like I said, um, it's very, very similar to MS SQLite. So the queries that you know um, there, you can for sure certainly use them in the SQLite. So if you have any questions, do leave a comment below, thumb the video up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.